Hi, y'all. Thanks for joining us at the latest episode of the vSphere Breakroom Chats. In this series, we bring VMware experts to talk about vSphere and related technologies. Um, I'm so excited to be joining y'all today. My name is Janae Davis, and I'm new to the team. So if you're wondering who is this person, um, that's why I'm new. And it's perfect that I'm here um, as a new person today because we're also going to talk about new vSphere things. Um, in today's episode, we're going to cover the latest release of vSphere, and our expert today is Glenn Simon. Um, he's a vSphere product marketing manager and the launch lead for this latest release. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Thanks, Janae. Awesome. So what's the biggest news for vSphere that we announced at Explore? Yeah, so uh, for those of you who may have missed um, our announcement at Explore, we announced a couple of things. We announced the latest update to vSphere uh, 8, which is update 2, uh, as well as a, a new cloud service that uh, can be used by any of our customers using vSphere Plus. Excellent. And so what are the key objectives that we're trying to address with this release? What are the um, highlights of the features and benefits? Yeah. So so from a problem point, point of view, we're, we're trying to do really three things. First of all, for the admins, the vSphere admins out there who use the product every day, we want uh, we want to make things more efficient for them so they don't have to spend as much time doing, um, you know, the day-to-day -day tasks, particularly things like updating, updating the releases, updating the versions of their vSphere out there. Uh, the second thing we want to do is we want to supercharge performance of your workloads, particularly those workloads that are really, that really demand a lot of, a lot of horsepower, like, you know, your AI ML type workloads. And then thirdly, we for you know for the consumers of the um, the infrastructure, so like people like your maybe your DevOps teams, your SREs, your um, even developers, platform operators, we want to um, help them to accelerate what they do, accelerate innovation. If you're developing new applications, accelerate you know everything they do. So kind of. Um, you know, so this kind of represents sort of the three major areas we're really tackling with these with this latest uh, release. Excellent. So I I do think we should get into a little bit of detail detail, um, go into some specifics, uh, like how are we specifically enhancing efficiency for IT admins? Right. So we're, we're you now a big area of focus, as I mentioned, is in making it easier for admins to update to the latest releases. And that, of course, helps helps them get on the latest um, versions of the software, get, you know, the, get all of the great features and benefits. It also helps them manage things like, you know, close security gaps and things like that. Now we've done, uh, we're introducing a new service um, for vSphere Plus customers um, called the ESXi Lifecycle Management Service. This is going to help you from the cloud console be able to update your entire fleet of ESXi hosts, um, uh, which is um, if you're particularly in a larger environment, it could could reduce the number of update operations you need to do pretty dramatically. Um, for uh, and also for updating your vCenters, uh, we're actually uh, taking some technology that we in integrated initially with vSphere Plus called Reduce Downtime Upgrade. And we're actually broadening that and making that available to all of our vSphere customers. So if you're updating your vCenters in your environment um, and you're concerned about the downtime, we've actually reduced that downtime from, an, from say about an hour to just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, more on the security side, we've um, we've made uh, we've continued to expand our support for identity providers. So we've we've already supported ADFS as well as Okta, and we're with uh, this latest update also adding to the list support for Microsoft Azure AD uh, or what is now named uh, Intra ID. Um, so that identity provider can now also be used to centralize your own authentication and, and kind of move those logins and passwords out of vSphere and clear those security audits that much faster. I uh, gotcha. Yeah, I, I, we're really excited about this uh, cloud, new cloud service. We love being able to add more time to our day, get more hours in the day. So um, and get your weekends yeah, back too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so that sounds cool. Uh, what else? How are we um, supercharging performance? Right. So 
uh, you know, everyone is now AI, especially gener generative generative AI is is a giant giant focus uh, for pretty much everyone now. Uh, AI, I mean, AI has been kind of a focus as we've seen over the last few years, but now it's just gone through the roof in terms of emphasis. And vSphere is really kind of in the in the middle of it because. Um, the resources you need to run AI or to run generative AI is, is those accelerators like the uh, GPUs. Um, so we put a lot of effort in making uh, GPU and really scaling up the, the, uh, the GPU firepower that you can put within a virtual machine. So we've, we've bumped that up to up to now 16 GPUs that you can uh, run within a, a virtual machine. Um, and we've also enhanced our DRS. So that DRS is the um, uh, technology we use for load balancing and for placing workloads on the various hosts that you have. And we've put a lot of effort into making it smarter in how we distribute uh, GPU or, you know, GPU based workloads, because what we found is that while it does a good job with performance, there are cases where you may not be utilizing your GPUs quite as fully as you could be. And so we've enhanced DRS to more, more uh, efficiently utilize all the GPU resources you have and, and uh, improve the utilization and, and ultimately then the, you know, the, uh, the value you're getting out of those resources. And then, so that's more on the GPU side, but then also on the DPU side. Now we introduced in vSphere 8, about a year ago, we introduced support for our um, data protection or <laughs> data processing units. DPUs, which help you offload uh, offload processing from your CPUs to this now dedicated DPU, and that frees up resources and, and cycles for your applications on the C on the CPU. Uh, and we in, um, and what we've done in this update, we've expanded the ecosystem. So now you can uh, include server hardware from uh, Lenovo as well as uh, Fujitsu, uh, which adds to the ecosystem that we. We introduced with Dell and HPE, so more hardware, more more systems now can can take advantage of the the DPU performance advantages that we introduced in vSphere eight. That's great to hear. I, I think we can all agree that um, how we partner is how we're going to advance um, all of the AI technology and continue to move it forward. So um, I'm I'm glad to hear that. I'm sure our, our audience joining us is excited about that as well. And I know you plan to go into that in more detail in later uh, break room chats. So um, we're looking forward to hearing more about that since it's such a hot area. Um, speaking of hot areas, uh, what about innovation for DevOps teams? How um, how how are we uh, launching new stuff to help for with those folks? Sure, sure. Uh, so as as everyone knows, we introduced our Kubernetes integration a few years ago, and and that's continued to be to grow and become a part of uh, many organizations' um, cloud native platforms. So for running those cloud native apps, yeah. and <clears throat> pardon me. And that whole area continues to evolve. And, and one of the, the areas that uh, we spent a lot of uh, effort on in this update and the latest update is giving more tools and more capability for consumers. And by consumers, I'm talking about not necessarily the vSphere admins, but you know, they're DevOps engineers, maybe developers, maybe platform engineers, platform operators, SREs, cool. other people who are using the infrastructure. And to give them the tools to be able to provision VMs on their own, so through self-service. Uh, but in addition to, and then use what, a, you know, we've, we're introducing a VM registry, which allows them to then to design the VMs that they want and then publish those VMs that other folks can use or they can use. Um, uh, but in addition um, to, to being able to then kind of, you know, keep a content library of those virtual machine images also to, you can now create and provision independently, create your own Windows VMs. Now, pre previously you could do that with Linux VMs. We've kind of closed, you know, removed those restrictions now. Um, you can also um, provision pretty much any type of VM that, that, that vSphere supports. Again, previously you were limited in the types of VMs you could provision through the VM service. Now you can, there's pretty much no limitation. So, so now those consumers are really gonna have a lot more independence, a lot more ability to self-service whatever VMs that they need. And then one other thing that we've done, we, there's a lot of um, a complexity or light, a lot of time involved in setting up your supervisor clusters within the Kubernetes space. 
Uh, and, and we put some effort to make that process a lot, you know, kind of shortcut that process, make it a lot easier and faster to do by essentially allowing you to um, export a, a supervisor cluster configuration and then import it into another supervisor. So um, you could almost think of it as uh, copy paste, right? Mm. And then using that, you can then, um, you know, define a supervisor cluster and then quickly replicate those, uh, that same config across your environment. Well, awesome. I know we all love hearing about um, more self-service capability. So that is um, great to hear and very exciting. Um, speaking of self-service, where can folks go to learn more about the latest vSphere enhancements? Yeah, uh, so definitely not, the first place I would suggest people go is the announcement blog, well, uh, sure. <laughs> and, uh, which we, we published this week. And then also uh, stay tuned to this channel, the YouTube channel. We're going to continue to um, to publish a, a few more break room chats that actually kind of go. I'll I'll be hosting them actually, and we'll we'll kind of go one one click deeper into each one of those those areas that we talked about. And if you could, uh, if we could also link that blog uh, in the announce in the in this video description, so people can find it easily. Perfect. Great. Well, yeah, we, we, we've gotten through this quick. Um, so we've come to the end of this episode. Thanks, Glenn, so much for joining us today. Yeah. Um, if you like this episode, please join us for the next time for another of these break room chats. Please subscribe um, to our channel so you can get the latest on vSphere. Uh, again, I'm your host, Janae Davis. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great day. Mm -hmm.